Senator TV, we've got a great one for you today. We're going to go visit Lisa Owens, 1983. This is a story you've got to hear. If you're a young McDaniel mountain lion and you want someone to look up to, a story to listen to and hang on to, Lisa Owens is your story. Come on, we'll tell you the story. Hey, you're Come here. On in. Good to see you. Good to see you. Lisa, thank you so much for inviting us to your living room and having a conversation about growing up at Madison and Absolutely, Bill. all your experiences. I, I really look forward to it. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I've gotten to know you the last three or four years better, and I've heard some of, some of the bits and pieces of your story, but I really thought it was important for some of the alumni that maybe were younger or older than us, uh, and, and especially these, uh, these McDaniel mountain lion new, new, newcomers that need to hear yeah. the stories of the alumni and that's why we're here today. So you grew up in the Gregory Heights grade school area. You had a couple older brothers that were ball players. You had a dad that was influential on the Park Bureau. Tell me what that was like growing up. Uh, you know, it was a little bit like a Norman Rockwell painting in some <laughs> ways back in those days where we knew everyone. Um, I'd walk to school even as, gosh, even as a first grader, maybe, I don't think, I couldn't have walked in kindergarten, but it, as a very young age, I was walking to Gregory Heights. And, you know, back then, everybody knew you. You were, you were passing neighbors and their parents had eyes on you all the way to school. So, you know, you were a bigger, even though I didn't know it at the time, I was this little, this little person, that, but I had all this community around me that paid attention to me. And, um, you know, it was just such a, a great experience being able to have that local connection with, with diff, all the families. But as far as um, just school and the community, it really, um, and my brothers, you know, I, I looked up to them, still do, and um, not just for their height. <laughs> but um, they 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 played sports and the, you know and when I, they went on to Madison, I couldn't wait to get to Madison. Um, it was just like it was all my friends. You know, middle school was great. Being at Gregory Heights was fun, but you really wanted to get to the high school. And and they'd bring home their yearbooks uh, when they were in high school. And I think I knew the photos and the people in the photos better than they did. Cause yeah. I was just this little kid looking through everything. That's and great story. I just loved going. And, um, my mom would take me out of school for the Rose Fence, Rose Festival court coronations at Madison every year. And, um, you know, I got, so I got excited about that kind of thing. Um, I went to all the games. Um, and, and as far as the neighborhood, um, Boy, you know, my dad, being with the Park Bureau, as you mentioned, I grew up going to Normandale Park every summer night because at that time, before he was a superintendent, he was one of the um, directors of sports and recreation. And Normandale, Irvlin Stadium, mm -hmm. was his under his umbrella. And we would go, and I don't know if you remember this, but there's that big kind of uh, bronzed, platter or plaque yeah. at, at right at the entrance right. and I was young enough that I could slide down that you know and I wasn't watching the games at all I was just playing around running around but then as I got older you know softball was just an integral part of my life yeah. um, so he, he was super uh, supportive and influential in that way um, but uh, us going to playing softball starting at 10 all of my girlfriends we would um, play down at Rose City Park, and then as soon as we were done, we'd literally jump on our bikes or we'd run up to Glenhaven Park and watch the Babe Ruth games. Sure. And so we, we, or the Little League, whichever age we were at the time. And so the boys and the girls in that Rose City Little League, Babe Ruth um, area around Glenhaven and Rose City School, we just were all pals. We knew each other, even though we went to different elementary schools. We all hung out together in the summers, and by the time we got to high school, it was just so exciting to be under one one community umbrella yeah. after you know growing up in the summers. Yeah. 
you didn't see each other much during the school year, except the ones you went to school with. But then in, once we got to high school, um, it all blended together and it was just this great community that you'd already had roots with the families, with our what parents. What sports did you play? You played softball, obviously. Uh, softball, really. I played basketball. Sure. I mean, and, and you know, back then the basketballs were men's size. Yeah. So, I mean, we, through senior year, were playing, you know, trying to huck those basketballs up, you know, and uh, I was kind of envious when I got into college, I didn't play basketball, but but I knew the basketball size had changed yeah. and I thought that was so great. Well, a lot easier to I shoot. mean, it's so much easier, yeah. but. Well, let's um, fast forward a little bit. Let's talk about, now all of a sudden, you know, your, 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 your brothers are, athletes and big tall basketball players and you know did you see that as your identity walking on campus your freshman year what was that like you know i i did i guess i didn't even really think about it it was um my all of my friends played sports you know we played softball um all summer long and so when we got to, to high school, it was just sort of a given. We played volleyball, basketball, softball, and... Um, keep you busy. And you keep, it, it just was a, it wasn't even a thought. It was just part of our social circle and um, how we wanted to spend our time. And I think it, it guided our academics as well because you had to keep up in order to play. And... Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was really, it was just an integral part of the experience, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't even remember, you know, sports, Title IX, I think, happened when I was 10. And so I, that's young enough to not even understand that before that time there weren't sports for right. girls. But I, I knew about it, you know, I, I, I kind of, uh, I kind of got a gist of, of that this was special. That, that there were leagues, you know, Little League started for, for us in Rose City, and I knew it was special, but I didn't really understand um, until later that how, how beginning cutting edge that was. It was just a given for my friends and me to, to be able to play. And, um, you know, you were mentioning some, you know, just before, I think in the 70s, I started high school in 1980, um, in the 70s, um, early 70s, they had three-on-three half-court type yeah. games. And I, game. like that is yeah. beyond me. You know, yeah. I, I, I couldn't, I've never experienced that. So I was really fortunate to be at the beginning yeah. of that era where girls playing sports was a given. And honestly, I never, ever experienced resistance to that. The, the um, When I got to high school, the coaches were supportive of the both men's and women, the um, the boys that played athletics, they always came to watch us and support us. It was just, we grew up at a time where it, it actually allowed a, a bigger community engagement yeah. because the boys would come watch yeah. us, we'd go watch them, yeah. and it was a really cool time. Yeah. Um, so I feel pretty lucky. Well, you know, I know you enough to know that you got a lot of hum humility. I mean, a lot of folks don't know here that you know, you're a PIL Hall of Famer that you, I think you lettered all four years of both basketball and softball. You were all league in both sports. I think you guys won some championships. You had a, a lot of success. And even compared to a lot of the great male names that we work with and get to honor with the association, you know, mm -hmm. at what point were you thinking about teaching and coaching in high school or when you were playing? Was that kind of a programming or something you were thinking about when you were thinking about going off to college? You know, I, if I'm being totally honest, yeah. I was one of those kids that I had no idea what I wanted yeah. to do. Yeah. And um, I, I did see myself coaching. And, and so education and coaching just seemed like a really logical decision at 18. Yeah. And, and it turned out to be a great one. I, I mean, I really didn't, I, I didn't know um, what to explore major, you know, to major in or to, you know, really focus in college, but education and, and um, exercise science is what I majored in and I got a graduate degree in, in um, teaching. So that was, that was just how it played out and it turned out to be 10 amazing years back at Madison. Yeah. You know? 
So you went up to, I, we, I, let's go back a little bit, but you went up to Pacific Lutheran. You go yep. up north. You play softball for four years. Mm -hmm. You play in some good teams. Yeah. Um, you get to have a lot of fun. Um, yeah. And that must have been a fun experience. So at what point do you graduate and go, okay, now I got to go get a job and be a teacher? What, what, tell me about that and that transition and interviewing and, yeah. and that. Yeah. Boy, that's, that's kind of fun to think back on. It was just a fun time to graduate from college. I, you know, I, um, I think the, the, the big memory, I, I, I graduated with an education degree and I started applying. I, you know, being at PLU, I was up in Washington. So I applied in Washington and I applied in Oregon, but I only got, back then you had to get, um, uh, you had to take an exam to be certified in Oregon to teach. Yeah, a different state. And different state, yeah. So I only took the Oregon certification, and um, and then I took off. Like I literally went to Portland State, took took the exam, and one of my college girlfriends came and picked me up with the car packed, and we drove to California, and we taught. Um, we worked at a fitness camp all summer long and had a blast, and I. I, I in the meantime, I had all these applications out and, you know, I had, I had talked to, um, I think I had reached out to Madison, um, just because you have connections there and Bill Whittle was still there and spoke with him and there were no, there were no openings at the time. But by the end of summer, one of the health teachers, um, retired, I believe. And so there was this opening and Herb Osaki at the time was the softball coach and he retired. Oh yeah, I remember that name. Love Mr. Class. Osaki. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he retired. So there was this softball position and uh, health physical education position opened. And, and I interviewed literally the day I came back from California and um, I got the teaching job and the varsity softball job at 22. I know I have a funny story on that. I, 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 um, after I was, after I had left teaching, I think I was, I think so. Um, one of my, maybe I was still teaching one of my former athletes called and she said, Lisa, I said, yeah, she goes, it's Sarah's wick. I said, what's going on? And she goes, I just turned 22. And I go, well, congratulations. And she said, I said, happy birthday. And she said, no, she goes, do you real? I'm just now realizing that when I was a junior in high school, you were 22 years old. Yeah. And I go, I know I was young. She goes, that is so young. And she goes, I go, but you didn't know that. Anybody yeah. that graduates from college seems like, yeah. you know, yeah. they are just so, so old, adult. so adult. Yeah. And I kept that, you know, I kept it that way. And she just, she was just kind of blown away. It was, it was kind of cute. She tracked me down to, well, to, it's a, yeah. it's a big responsibility. I think that, and I, I remember being that age and coaching in the PIL and you know, but having mentors, I was, I was an assistant assistant, you know, of some program right. and I had, you know, 20 year coaches to look up to. You have a, you're running a program, right? You've got to structure it, structure practices, figure out the whole thing. And that must've been a lot in dealing with parents and expectations. It's a lot more at 22 than people think. It, it really is. But you know, it was interesting. I came from, you know, college was a great experience to see what, you know, that level organization, how it runs, sure. how it operates, that helped. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I was coaching varsity softball alongside Dave Gasser, who's right. the varsity baseball yeah. coach, who could not yeah. be A, yeah. Yeah. a more stellar human, sure. B, a fabulous coach, and C, you, you know, a good friend. We'd become good friends. And he, you know, he was one of, one of those people, still is, that, that will help you no matter what. And, you know, I think Madison was very, in fact, he and I have had this conversation and Jeff Erdman and I have had this conversation when we were teaching and coaching there, our staff was so supportive of one another. It was really, a, I think a pretty yeah. unique setup yeah. where the, the guys helped out the women coaches and the women's teams and vice versa. And, you know, we all go to the football games and go out afterwards and celebrate whether they won or lost. And, you know, we had this camaraderie, but as a mentor, um, Dave Gasser, and then after him, Jeff Erdman could not ask for, um, better men to be alongside women's athletics. Sure. And they, they even were role models to their athletes 
who supported that, the women's teams. And you Bill know. Whittle, the AD. Oh, Bill Whittle, yes. he was, yeah. you know, super pivotal in me even getting the job. I mean, sure. I'm so grateful to him. Yeah. But he, um, and such a good man. I mean, he just he really had an eye for um, the character in coaches he wanted to have Absolutely. around the kids, and yeah. that. It showed, and I, I don't know if the kids, student athletes recognized it, but I would like to think if they looked back now and kind of thought about who was coaching around them, not just their own coaches, but the staff around, I think they'd recognize that we, we had good relationships with each other, and I think it translated out have you to read the his, Have you read Bill's book? Well, you know what? I have it. Yeah. I have not read it yet. I have to be up front and honest. I just finished it this summer, and I got to tell you, it parallels probably a lot of my thinking as I hear you, um, you know, you tell your story. It's all about his story and God's will and his ability to embrace God's will. And it looks like God's will, you know, kind of unfolded for you properly. Obviously. I think so, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And he, he definitely, I'm glad you mentioned that because he, that book, I just learned of it, I yeah. think a month or two ago. Yeah. So I ordered it, but I haven't read it yet. But yeah. um Anyway, yeah, it was the, that whole experience. Um, How about coaching girls? What, you know, I know what coaching boys is like, and I know what coaching you know young young women is like. Um, at that time, you know, it was kind of really when women's sports really had a great foundation, right. and you, you know, was practices you know very similar to boys' practices? Do you think they were much different? Um, was it what, what was it, what was it in contrast? Because I know you coached a little volleyball, a little basketball, but you you had a really great winning. And a bunch of championships in softball for a good run, five, six years, didn't you? Yeah, yes. We 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 still, you know, back again, I keep saying back then. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> I never thought I'd be saying that. Uh Rose City Little League was still very much intact. And you know, I'm a big fan of more competitive sports that they have now. However, you know, it was still in the day where your your neighborhood yeah. little league fed the school so you know you have this contact with kids um when they're younger and they they and just like baseball did you know you they they look forward to getting to the high school just like i did and so i had year after year just such great student athletes and um and so there was and there was that neighborhood feel you know i knew I knew if I didn't know their parents, I knew someone that knew their parents. Um, I knew someone that they knew. I knew an aunt or an uncle because it was all in that same Rose City, Gregory Heights neighborhood. And, um, and so it was, it was just really fabulous. But as far as how we operated, it was very much like the baseball. And, and a lot of that has to do with being alongside Dave Gasser sure. and Jeff Erdman because I learned from them yeah. and we shared space and so we would we would um, operate our coach because you're inside, right? Yes. We're in Northwest. Oh, so we yeah. were February, inside. February, March is pouring. There were, there were there were yeah. seasons where we literally played an entire half season, the games back to back to back. You know, yeah. so you're practicing day in day out, and it it could get a little monotonous. So we'd get creative with indoor space. And um, were you playing your games over Normandale? We eventually. Yeah. Eventually, where we started at Rose City, and the JV and varsity would play on the two Rose City yeah. uh, park fields. The Little League field. And, yeah. and then, which was great, because that's what we grew up playing on yeah. with Little League. So it was just normal for sure. us. Um, and then we went to Irv Lind. So it was Irv Lind, which was so much fun. To, sure. It just felt big well, league. Full circle, the, the kids, you as a kid, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And the kids loved it. Sometimes we got to play under the lights. And then JV would play out on the Normandale field. So it was still, yeah. you know, people could run back and forth. And it was still a real community yeah. field. Just no locker rooms and no, you know, some of the things. Exactly, that, yeah, exactly. Kind of a little different. Things, yeah. things have grown up the, and changed. The only regret, if I have one regret after the 10 years of coaching, right when I literally, I had decided not to teach and coach anymore after the 10 year mark. And my dad had a softball complex out at Delta Park named after him, the yep. William V. Owens daughter softball. And, daughter and I played a lot of games out there together. Yeah, such a pretty field. The yeah. fields are awesome. And we, PIL was, was, I think they only did it for one season because it didn't really work out for the transportation very well, but they played all the games out there. Yeah. And I, I really would have loved to have coached yeah, on have nice on coach. his fields. Yeah. I did play on him a couple times, but yeah. um, but I I've never got to coach on him. That that was a that was a regret. But 
So we, we covered, you know, growing up in Northeast, at the high school, coming back and coaching, which is, I mean, just, I bet you a lot of athletes dream to come back. I mean, Jeff Urban got to live it. Jabe Gasser got to some greats, yep. you know, and, and you're certainly up there at their level if, if, you, if you really want to be honest about it and give you full credit. So at some point you said, nah, probably not what I want to do the rest of my life. How, what, what, what was that thinking? Because I think that's important to young people to think, <laughs> you know, I can be yeah. really successful as a teacher and a coach and yeah. I can still go do something else. Yes. Um, well, first of all, I have so much respect for teachers and, and, and quite frankly, that was probably part of my, part of my decision making. Um, you know, teachers generally uh, teach for 30 years yeah. and you can change schools, you can become an administrator, you can do different things within those 30 years. But um, it's, it's a commitment of 30 years or more for most. Um, and I, I always tell the story, I blame Bill, Wh I'm not Bill Willett, I, I, I blame Bill Fransky. Because, right. And he, was, he just gets appalled because we were very close and taught side by side for years, well, 10 years. And just, he just is a dear, dear person to me. And, but I always teased him after I stopped teaching that it was his fault because he was so excellent. <laughs> at 30 plus years and I look I would watch him I literally I mean this is a kind of a true I mean it is true I I thought I I don't think I can be that good yeah. 30 years in and I'm somebody that I want to do things excellent you know I put a lot into what I do and I just I just don't think I don't think that was for me the long haul yeah. but boy 10 years was a great chapter no, and that makes sense I get it and kids being involved in in kids lives and now I get to, I've worked with them in real estate at times. I've worked with some of the families that I had at Madison. I, um, I am friends with them, whether it's via Facebook or in different, in different avenues, our paths yeah. have crossed. And it's so cool to see these former students raising their high school and now college kids. Yeah. And they're just these amazing young adults. And now I don't even know if they'd consider themselves young adults now. I, don't know. I do. Yeah. But, um, well, tell us about your, I mean, you're 20 years now in real estate? Almost 25. Wow. 24. I think yeah. I'm 24 years in real estate. Well, it's pretty hard uh, to imagine that. Time probably flies for you. But tell us, tell me about your, your real estate, uh, your business and, you know, being an entrepreneur and, and being an agent. And I mean, you, you, I know you do quite a bit over in the Madison neighborhood at times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's been a great, I mean, I wasn't sure um, what I what my next transition after teaching would be, but I had a good friend in real estate, and she was my realtor, and she just said, "Hey, listen, you know, try it out. Be my assistant for a year." And I got my license, and um, in fact, I was getting my I was going to night school, getting my license back before they had online school, right? Um, while I was coaching. So I'd finish up a game and then go to this night school till 10 o'clock at yeah. night and get my license. But anyway, um, it's been a great transition for me. It's a good fit. It's a, a lot of teachers and nurses I've heard go into real estate um, it, because it's a very service oriented field. Um, a lot of people think of it as sales, but it's really service oriented. It's, it's taking care of people in a really um, exciting, but nervous sometimes it's, time in their lives um, can be stressful. It's their biggest investment. So um, to be able to shepherd people during that time, it was just surprisingly a great fit for me. I think teaching and coaching helped that. Um, and then the business side, I love. Uh, the flexibility of the schedule, I love. Sure. You know, um, I, in fact, I remember Jeff Erdman saying, you want to give up your summers and, and weekends and, you know, holidays to be a realtor and I go well I kind of think maybe I do I but I don't want to <laughs> sell my soul to it so yeah. I, I you know I I took a year leave of absence two years in a row just to be sure because I could have gone back yeah. to Madison sure. with my job but it's just been a great feel and I've I work in southwest and northeast and um, the, I call it the four quadrants close in Portland yeah. um, some of the metropolitan area but it's been a great ride so that makes me curious here you know communities, you know, young families, you, you see the change and move, you know, obviously Madison and Portland real estate is really going through some transitions and changes that are bold and different from us growing up. What do you see? 
what do you see that interests you, that excites you about the Madison neighborhood? And where do you think it's gonna be five or 10 years from now? Well, I think that, well, I'm seeing several things. I, I think that I'll get to the, the, just the brand new school building. That's kind of the obvious yeah. direction to go. But yeah. um, before that, I think, you know, young families are moving into the area. Um, I knew you were going to ask a similar question to this, and I, I just looked up a stat to understand what the demographic is um, right now for Madison to look forward to, or McDaniel uh, yeah. to look forward to. And it's, um, there's several thousand toddlers. There's, there are another few thousand middle school kids in the 97213 and 97220 zip codes that are gonna be so feeding a lot of young families. Yeah, the numbers are gonna And I just love that. Yeah. I love to see that, because yeah. I think, I think um, our generation and even the generation just past us, they've moved on and now the new families are moving in. And I think with this brand new school and yeah. I, 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 I really hope and- um, So you're real optimistic. I am. Yeah. I am. I think it's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. I think a, a school needs numbers and it needs families. School needs numbers and, yeah. and you need young energy. You yeah. need, you need um, new families that are excited about the neighborhood and the community. And yeah. I think that's, we're going to see that. Well, we saw what Franklin's remodel did to, you know, be a catalyst for change and in investment and, you know, an improvement over there. And, and we certainly are expecting the same thing out of Madison. Um, yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to put you on the spot a little. I'm sorry, but um, what do you think about the name change? Uh, well, that is a good question. I, um, you know, I think as even as I've been talking and kind of painting this picture of what it was like growing up in the neighborhood, clearly um, the name Madison sort of was the umbrella for the neighborhood. It was, that's, that's what we looked forward to getting up to that school um, it was part of our community. It was, uh, it was what we, what we associated our neighborhood with. Sure. And so I think letting go of that association was, was hard for me at first. It all felt like it happened really fast. So sure. I, I found myself sort of spinning with it and I realized I was pretty attached to attaching my memories and the experiences I had and the people to the name, and I realized, you know, it's really not about the name. Right. It's about the community, and it's about the people, and it's about the activities that bring you together. And high school is sort of that culminating activity. It brings the different schools to one place, and you you build from there, and you become a part of something bigger. You are you find your niche, whether it's sports or theater or music or student student body government or you know whatever that club or group might be you find it there and and it's not the name i mean but you know school spirit does attach itself to a name so i think there's a lot of people that including myself that have struggled with the name change and i get it <clears throat> but there, there are there certainly are you yeah. see it on facebook <clears throat> you know I, I look at it as like a, a genesis you know uh, a new school a new name a new start you know, and it's, it, I think it's, whether yeah. it's politics or not, it really doesn't matter because I think it's been widely embraced. And most of the people that I felt were ups, upset about it early are really at peace now with it, which feels good yeah. in, in a very short time. Yeah. So I think you're I think right. So. Yeah. I think so. And I think, I think we have an opportunity as alumni now to, we'll always be Madison alumni. Sure. I mean, that's where we went. That was the name that was, was given for us. But um, I think we have an opportunity now to sort of bridge from Madison to the McDaniel name because um, we have such a legacy and history of how many, s six decades, yeah. I think, because it was late 50s late, it was started. Yeah. So yep. six decades yep. of, of really solid community spirit, if, yeah. you, if we want to call it that, along with school spirit. And I think that... Um, you know, being able to support the next, the next students and athletes that come through that building that, um, 
we can steward with with our traditions and our in our history and you know i know there's going to be some time capsules there involved are, yeah. in the school some time capsules with the field house that we're fundraising for uh i think we will have our stamp still which which pleases me because it does feel like you know all for for a short blip there it felt like everything was being erased was, and was Principal McDaniel, the principal when you were there? He was vice principal when I was there. Yeah. And you know, honestly, if, if the name's going to change, he's such a great guy. Yeah. He, he had a smile on his face. He supported students. He supported athletes. He supported coaches and teachers. He supported the community. And um, So of the choices, it was yeah, a great Yeah, yeah. It was it, he, just a good, good man. And, um, and then he wasn't there. Um, he had already passed when I got there as a teacher. Well, and we but, hear the family is very supportive yes. of our association alumni and yeah. some of the time capsule work that's being done to honor the senators and yep. athletes in history and obviously the fundraising that we're doing. And I, and I want to move into that. So tell us about building a barn, building a you know field house for all the sports yeah. and, and our association and, and what you think of that work. Uh, it's always been a long haul for all of us. Yeah, a little, a little more of a challenge. The than we finish thought it line was. keeps yeah. moving. Yeah. But yeah. and then, but also, I think I think we're setting something maybe for our, the future. You know, the future alumni to to contribute to after we've kind of done our work. Yeah. Well, first, first of all, I think I think this new school building is get, is going to be stunning. I can't wait to see it. Um, and this field house that we're helping to raise funds for it, it's going to be such a great addition i mean if if people watching this haven't gone to lower campus recently seeing the baseball and the softball diamonds i mean oh my gosh i just envy yeah. you know i i'm so happy and oh sorry i don't know if that messed up um i'm so happy and i i'm i'm envious but um it's just great facilities and the track and um, but this field house is going to be open for everybody. So I think it's going to be in and of itself a community builder yeah. for the athletes, which is great. And so I'm, I'm really happy to be a part of that process. It, and um, See, my driver in this whole story is this equity. You know, we, we talked today about inequities and just social justices, but, you know, raising my kids in the burbs in Portland um, and all the advantages that they've got through field houses and fields and you know and private right. lessons and right. everything and 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 to think that any kid shouldn't have those same opportunities right. is really crystal clear in my brain that that's why we're doing this it's 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 not about luxury it's not about expectations of championships anymore it's about just giving kids great facilities to grow yeah. it's an extension of the of the classroom. It's chalk and, and, and erasers it, it, it and is. school books of the athletic fields. It's, that's yeah. the only difference. It really, it really is. Yeah. And, and I think, I think the coaches will all really benefit from it and have, get creative with how they get to use it. Yeah. So, and, and sticking with kind of the alumni theme, there will be, there will be bits and pieces there that will be able to keep some of the traditions yeah. over the years of our our impressive athletic yeah. um, we get to honor some rewards. of the athletes yeah. and yeah. some of the donors. And mm -hmm. So you and I have talked a lot, and I think we're kind of aligned and uh, even more than some of the other other folks that are involved in our, uh, our foundation and our alumni. You know, our hope is for the next generation to take over this alumni association and continue to invest in the kids, and it doesn't have to be athletics. Right, right, what right. You, what would you see it like? Well, I, I mean, you know, this, this field house happened to be an athletic venture. Yeah. So, you know, we talked about this way back at the beginning of the inception of, of kind of giving, giving the association a new life after it had kind of dwindled for a while. <clears throat> I think it would be fabulous if, if a group of former um, students, alumni, got together, whether it's for a, a music project sure. or um, the arts in another fashion, you know, and, and have, have some of the alumni that have a real passion for those departments to make the next, the next big imprint on, on, the, 
on this new school yeah. to give kids, you know, we're giving, we're working toward this athletic field house to give them opportunities. So maybe the next one is something around the arts. Sure. And how, how cool would that be? And then they pass the baton to another, another department within the school. But we need alumni to kind of step up and come out of the woodwork that have a passion for these different uh, avenues that they really enjoyed while they were at Madison and in high school. Yep. We got some fundraisers coming up in August. We've got a free throw shooting contest, which yep. will be fun. And in September, we've got a, a golf tournament, which we haven't had for a couple of years. And then next May, the big auction, which will be huge. It'll be a yeah. big dinner out at, at, uh, out at the country club in Northeast at Columbia edge. And you know, it's going to be fun. Yeah. I think we're going to have a lot of fun socializing with alumni and, and continuing to be the hub socially and yeah. then a great opportunity to fundraise and give back to the community. And yeah. hopefully we set a good foundation for the next 10 and 20 years. I think, I think that would be yeah, a I'm good I'm so plan. happy I got to sit in your living room and meet your little your Tez, little Tez and uh, see your beautiful home. And you know, Thanks. the opportunity to tell your story to these young kids that I hope get to watch off our website and on social media. So thanks so much. Absolutely.